Welcome, David Wiss here, Registered Dietitian, Founder of Nutrition and Recovery. Today we're going to talk about attentional bias. Attentional bias is a very important and fascinating construct. It essentially is a tendency for one's perception to be affected by the recurring thoughts at the time. Or in other words, one's tendency to notice what they're already thinking about. It might explain why people fail to consider alternative possibilities because the mind is already biased towards thinking about things a certain way. This is something we understand at the psychological level and now we're starting to think about it at the brain or neurological level. So with eating disorders, um, we're thinking about how attention bias refers to one's tendency to overly focus on information in the environment that is disorder salient. So things like food, things like body, etc. How does genetics and other uh, history of addiction, anxiety play in? Uh, those are the big research questions now. If someone's more predisposed to attentional bias, you match it with a cue, a trigger in the external environment. We're seeing body dissatisfaction, more anxiety, restriction binge, compensation. The cycle continues. A recent review of attentional biases looked at all of the different measurement paradigms that are commonly used in research. Things like emotional stroop, visual probe task, spatial cueing task, visual search. These are different measurement styles that can look at the brain's reaction time to a stimuli. And there's more recent measurement methods like eye tracking and EEG. And there's been articles recently that have looked at some of these different measurement uh, tools in order to assess attentional bias because it is an important construct in research. Uh, this was looking at adolescents. It's an example of a visual search task. So you can see from a blank screen there'll be pictures of either food or other stimuli and they'll track the eye and the way that the brain responds. Essentially adolescents with binge eating disorder in this study showed a greater detection bias for food targets compared to controls and those that had detection bias for food was associated with much greater reward sensitivity which is something we study in addiction. It's not just food that we're interested in but also body. So using EEG with 20 women, um, this study looked at how people responded to underweight, normal weight, and overweight female body pictures and you could see here that in the bulimics there was a significant difference in response to the overweight body stimuli. So the research suggested that being exposed to the stimuli was more arousing for those with bulimia and the researchers concluded that the perceptual as well as cognitive affective component of a disturbed body image in bulimia nervosa might be associated with the processing bias of overweight body stimuli. So there's research that shows pictures of bodies using this EEG technology and detects how people respond. This is interesting because we need to know more about body image in order to be more helpful to our patients. It's possible that there's a familial transmission. This was an eye tracking study that looked at how body image disturbance can be transmitted from mother to daughter, both indirectly as well as directly. There are some differences in attentional bias in anorexics that have either restrictive subtype or binge purge subtype and this makes a lot of sense based on what we know about the impulsive nature of the binge purge. This research was done using the dot probe task. So it's food stimuli, it's body stimuli, and it's highly relevant to bulimia nervosa. Um, in other words, uh, people with bulimia demonstrate a cognitive bias for both food and body related cues, but there's some discrepancy in these cognitive bias and food related cognitive biases are associated with severity of the disorder. So the more attentional bias someone has, the more likely they are to engage in the behaviors. Um, this study used functional MRI, which is quite expensive and found that food images elicited different responses in those that were obese and with binge eating disorder. So the big question is, how does this information help us tailor treatment for people that have specific phenotypes with higher degrees of attentional bias? And that's where the field is headed. This uh, recent study suggested that we can use attentional training to retrain the brain and to re-engage people in different behaviors and this might have some applications for eating disorders, obesity, drug addiction, etc. If, if not 
at the research level, we can use this information to be more helpful to our patients and our clients because we understand what the brain is doing uh, out in this uh, food environment that we're in. I've been able to use this concept and help understand people. And when people feel understood, they connect well and it works. Um, uh, if you have questions or comments about this, please uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, you got my information. I'm available to you.